It has been a very, very long wait. The Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom were released in August 2018, more than three years ago, and they're certainly showing their age in a very fast-moving technology industry. The last couple of years, there have been constant rumors about the release of a new model. The worldwide shortage of chips certainly hasn't helped. But finally, the Mavic 3 is here. Behave now and say hi to our friends. Good boy. In this video, I will show you all the new features and specs of this new beast compared to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Air 2S. I will test how it behaves in flight and show you a few sample of footage. There is really a lot of interesting stuff to see, so fasten your seatbelts and let's get going. As most of you already know, there is a basic model priced at around Euro 2200, then the usual combo version at around 2800, and the senior version at over 5000. I will be dealing solely with the basic version. The Cine one is extremely expensive and in my opinion it is a niche product aimed at film production companies who absolutely need the codec Apple ProRes 422HQ. The model is supplied with an internal SSD 1TB drive as the file produced are gigantic. This model implies the purchase of an arsenal of storage devices and the most powerful workstation for post-processing. In my opinion, the Cine model is not to be taken into account for consumer and prosumer users, or even for individual professional videographer or photographers. I generally suggest buying the combo version as extra batteries are always needed and the combo package is generally a very convenient way to get all the essential components. But in the case of the Mavic 3, I find that the bag and the handy filters are way too expensive. So I decided to go for the basic version with an extra battery and a car charger. You will find detailed info about specs and pricing in the description below. And yes, even the basic model is quite expensive. But as we will see later, several important new features might perfectly fit the needs of some specific users. So, what about you? Are you tempted by the new features? Let us know in the comment below. The first thing we notice is the dual lens. It is the first prosumer drone to offer such a feature. They are two completely different cameras with two different sensors, a wide-angle one and a powerful telephoto one. The idea is to combine the concept of the Mavic 2 Pro and the 2 Zoom within a single drone. We will see the specs of the lenses and some footage later on in this video. As we can see from these family portraits, the size is very similar to the Mavic 2 Pro and obviously bigger than the Air 2S. But the new model at 895 grams, at least for the European version, weighs less than the 907 of the 2 Pro. This is extremely important for European users, as drawn above the 900 grams threshold have much stricter regulations. I was expecting a much bigger size to accommodate the Macro for third sensor and the two cameras, so this is indeed an excellent surprise. Well done, DJI. Like the 2 Pro, the new model has omnidirectional sensors, although they are set differently. There are pairs of wide-angle obstacle detection sensors at the top, the front, the back and the bottom, but no lateral ones. But the front and back sensor are oriented slightly outwards and have a wider field of view, therefore they should provide lateral coverage. The battery is much bigger and it is housed in an enclosure in the back of the aircraft, a bit like in the Mini 2. It should provide a much longer flight time, more on this later. 
We insert the mini SD card above the battery in a slot where we also find a connection for charging the battery or to connect the drone to a computer. The overall build is excellent. The only negative I have found is that inserting the SD card in the slot is a bit fiddly. When the wings are open, there is a much bigger space below the camera. I find this very useful when landing over uneven surfaces. Finally, there is a well-designed protection for the camera and the propellers with a magnetic lock, very easy to use, much better than the flimsy plastic gimbal cover in previous models. The new model has some very important features compared to the 2 Pro and the Air 2S. Some of them are missing on one of the two models, others are missing in both. Some of these features might be worth for some users the difference in cost compared to the Air 2S, which at the moment is the major competitor of the Mavic 3. The main camera of the Mavic 3 has a Micro Four Thirds sensor, much bigger than the 1 inch one of the Air 2S and the 2 Pro the same size as the Panasonic GH5, an excellent mirrorless camera for video. It is the first prosumer drone equipped with such a large sensor, and we should expect improved performance in video, especially in low light and in high dynamic range situations. Later on this video, I will show you samples of footage with different color modes and at different resolutions, and I will of course publish in-depth video about the footage and photo quality of this drone, as well as face-to-face -face comparison with the Earth 2S and the 2 Pro. Like the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 3 has manual control of aperture, an important feature that is sadly missing in the Earth 2S. Variable aperture makes it much easier to find the correct exposure and to use a specific shutter speed. The weakest point of the Air 2S is the lack of lateral sensors, making it practically impossible to track across range. Like the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 3 has omnidirectional sensors, and with the new version of the Advanced Pilot Assistant System, APAS 5, will be a good candidate to compete with the Skydio 2 as the best tracking drone, once at the track will be available. The claim battery life is 46 minutes, against 31 for the Air 2S. This is certainly another major bonus, especially when shooting hyperlapses. Video resolution of 5.1K is slightly less than the 5.4 of the Air 2S, but Mavic 3 can record video at a maximum frame rate of 50 frames per second at 5.1K, and a whopping 120 frames per second as 4K, giving plenty of flexibility for slow motion. The Mavic 3 is equipped with a second camera, with a very deep telephoto lens and a field of view of 18 degrees, equivalent to 162 mm. So more or less a zoom factor of 7 times the one of the wide-angle lens. It is the first prosumer drone equipped with such a deep optical zoom, and I find this feature very useful in situations where we cannot get close to the subject due to regulation, to be able to film wildlife without disturbing, or for very interesting parallax effect. Due to the smaller 1 inch sensor, the quality is not as good as the one of the wide angle main camera, and there are other limitations. At the moment he can only shoot in 4K and only at 30 frames per second. Only the normal color is available. There is no manual control for exposure. And no support of raw photos, at least for the moment. Oh. At the moment the Mavic Air 3 is available for purchase with only the basic functionalities. Most of the intelligent features will be added by firmware upgrades within the next couple of months. This is a very unusual move by DJI and could bring several potential buyers to delay their purchase. I am surprised by this choice, but not worried, as over the years DJI has proven to be a reliable brand. The most important features missing are active track, point of interest, spotlight, the HLG color mode, master shots, hyperlapse, quick shots, 
panorama burst mode for photos. It is maybe quicker to tell which features are present at the moment. Apparently, the AI does not plan to install Waypoints, and this is a very bad surprise, as Waypoints is the favorite intelligent mode for many users, including me. After the phase takeoff, I immediately noticed that the level of noise is much lower than I expected. The newly designed low noise propellers do an excellent job. After a few hours testing, the transmission looks absolutely rock solid. I haven't yet experienced any latency or temporary loss of signal. I always test my drones in this area. There are plenty of telecommunication areas not too far, and with all other models of the Mavic line, I've always had issues. This drone is by far the one with the most solid signal. In the air, it feels very powerful and stable, with the horizontal line always perfectly straight. The Mavic 2 Pro had an extremely annoying tendency to abrupt drops of the camera when coming to a halt from high speed. The same issue was in the Air 2S, although not so pronounced. The gimbal of the Mavic 3 is excellent, and I have not noticed any drop. Wind resistance seems to be very good, although I haven't had the chance of testing it in very strong winds yet. One thing I notice immediately is that the vertical speed is much faster than the other models, especially in sport mode. Also, there is more difference in speed between the different flying modes. Cine mode is very very slow, much slower than an Air 2S, and this is very useful for precise moves. While for any adult filming situations, I use normal mode. Like the two previous models, it is possible to choose an FPV behavior for the gimbal. This function works really well now, and it is great fun. The first impression with the footage of the Mavic 3 is excellent, especially from the main wide-angle camera. But I will publish later on this week two in-depth videos about footage and photo quality, so stay tuned. Click on this link to watch some of my videos about the R2S. I will replace the link with the videos about footage and photo quality of the Mavic 3 as soon as I will publish them. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, it really helps the channel. See you soon.